The Zenith of Power is here in Rise of Kingdoms, and today I'll be telling you everything you need to know about it, from how you can win as a free-to-play to how some whales can save themselves thousands of dollars. If you want to be able to push in the Zenith and unlock these crazy city skins, you need to hear the advice that I'm going to give you, because every single speed-up matters, and if you're using them wrong, you could be throwing away your chance at getting a legendary city theme. <laughs> Let's begin with, how do you win a Zenith? Well, to win a Zenith, in my opinion, you need to be in the top 10. Yes, top 100 gets some rewards, but top 10 is where you want to be because you get a permanent city skin. When you're pushing a Zenith, you are looking to get the best city skin that you possibly can. And when you're doing it, you want to be within the rank 10 because you get the city theme permanently. That means you have it forever regardless of what happens. Anything below that, the city theme is only for 30 days, and that's only really useful for like 1k vk. You pop it at like past 4 and it will last you to King's Land. But after that, that is gone. Being in the top 10 is going to give you a permanent city theme forever. And that's what a Zenith really is. Next thing I'd like to mention is competition with Zeniths. The way a Zenith works is that you're competing with everyone in your continent. You can see 1436 here. If I were in their kingdom, I'm versing everyone in my continent. That means not only 1436, but every other surrounding kingdom, which should be 1436. So 1440 to 1449 should really be all the surrounding kingdoms. And it's a crazy number of kingdoms to really be versing in a Zenith, especially if you are in a very, very large continent that has Imperiums. It can be difficult to win a Zenith, which is where it kind of brings me into who can't win a Zenith. If you are in a continent with an Imperium kingdom such as 1093 or 1307, don't even bother pushing a Zenith unless you've got thousands, and I mean like 10,000 days worth of speedups because there are just going to be whales who rock up. I can guarantee if there's an Imperium kingdom, they're just going to have 10 whales who will just basically buy the Zenith. So it's going to be extremely difficult for you as a free-to-play or a low spender to beat an Imperium Kingdom in getting a Zenith, especially ones at the level of 1093, 1960, all those massive kingdoms. If they're in your continent, just don't bother doing the Zenith. It's going to be almost impossible for you. Now, there is one a bit of good news for some lower spenders and the newer players to the game. It's looking like Lilith is making continents smaller. I don't know if this is temporary and they'll eventually be merged, but it looks like they are a permanently smaller thing. So if you're in the newer kingdoms and newer continents, some of the new ones that have hit season two and season three, it seems like you've only got four kingdoms per continent and that's way better than nine. You'll be able to push Zeniths way easier. Just make sure you don't have any of those big massive Imperiums that I mentioned. KVK2 Imperiums can also be di like difficult to deal with, but for the most part, a KVK2 Imperium is way weaker than a Season of Conquest Imperium, like 20 billion power weaker. Now let's get down to the requirements for a Zenith. Well, First of all, you're going to need approximately 30 million power worth of speedups. And putting that in speedups, if you are below VIP 14, you are looking at around 2,500 days of speedups. If you're at VIP 14 to VIP 15, you're going to need around 2,268 days of speedups. If you're VIP 16, you need around 2,168 days of speedups. That's the approximate guess for 30 million power, which is training 3 million T5s. That sounds like a lot of speedups because it is a lot of speedups. If you want to win a Zenith and guarantee or almost guarantee that you get that place, you're going to need those speedups. And this can fluctuate depending on the skin. You may need less, you may need a crap load more. So I'd say that if you want to guarantee yourself a Zenith spot, you want to save about 5,000 days of speedups, you want to guarantee it, if you want to kind of risk it, then you could go for around 2,000-ish days to like get the 30 million power. But if you want to guarantee a Zenith win, 60 million is what you're looking at, a guaranteed win. Now, also, this can still fluctuate depending on if you've got an Imperium. If you've got an Imperium Kingdom, I don't know what the power requirements will be. And also the City Skin. If it's a really good skin, it's going to be much harder to win the Zenith. Another thing you really want to do if you want to win the Zenith is make sure that you're on the side of your Kingdom. So speak to your Kingdom leadership. Speak to your title givers. Try and get them to put up training boosts for you. Try and get them to give you the Duke title. And also try and suss out who else in your Kingdom is going to be competing. Because if you know the big Kingdom whale who's got like three accounts is competing... Don't bother pushing because he's probably going to just buy three spots in the Zenith that's going to be much harder to win. Try and speak to your kingdom members. Most kingdoms will host a group chat for anyone who wants to push the Zenith so you can kind of decide on whether or not you'll be able to beat some of these players in the Zenith. And also it does help the kingdom by letting the players who want to push the Zenith also know that you're pushing so that they can decide if they want to push the Zenith. And you can kind of organize on whether or not people should be pushing and shouldn't be pushing so that you may end up saving all your speed ups because you couldn't win the Zenith anyways. Next, you really want to be able to make sure you're getting a training rune. So pushing a Zenith could actually be easier if you're in a KVK, because if you're in a KVK, you can get access to a ton of holy sites and altars, which give you a ton of just speed ups and training runes. Because training runes are very hard to access in Home Kingdom if they're 
because it's really just you and your luck with what happens at the Lost Temple. You have still got around four or five days to get access to a training rune to be able to do the Zenith. But if you're in Lost Kingdom, you'll basically be able to guarantee getting a training rune every single day. Next, I'd also make sure that I'm getting a kingdom buff and I'm in the top alliance. If you're not in the top alliance, it can be a little bit harder to push. But even if you're in an alliance with just max technology, that will be fine. Just make sure they do have the training speed holy sight since that is going to save you a ton of speed ups. So make sure that is the case. The training speed sight is this one right here, the Shrine of War. Now, the next thing is for free to play low spenders who don't have everything maxed in their city. That means maybe you're missing a building or two. You're missing a T5. Maybe you're missing T5 tech. This is a great time to do it. If you want to do a Zenith and you've been stashing building and research speeds, if you're very far off T5 and you shoot up 20 million power from it or even 10 million power, you're 10 million power ahead of all the whales because you've used what I would call less valuable speedups. You use speedups such as research and, and building speedups. Your most valuable speedups in a Zenith will be your training and your generics. So if you want to push a Zenith and you can use research and building speedups to give yourself an advantage over the whales who will have to use training speedups and universal speedups because they've maxed every building, they've maxed all their they've maxed all their troop tech, then you're going to be at a nice advantage of around 10 million power. And in those cases, you may only need 1,200 to 1,500 days of speedups to really win a Zenith. I know it still sounds like a lot, but it's way less than the 2,000 from before because being able to push that much power is definitely going to give you a major advantage. I would also recommend if you're doing the Zenith to switch your civilization to Germany so you can get another 5% troop training speed, which will reduce the cost to around 2,000 total days of speedups. If you want to change to Korea as well, if you've got enough switches and you want to do a bunch of tech, this is another great way to do it. If you want to do a mixture and you don't have enough switches to go like Korea and then another civilization has building speed, which I think is China, then you could go straight to just Egypt and do both just like as a mixture. But I think if you can choose between any of these three civilizations, whether it be Germany for training, China if you've got a ton of buildings to do, or Korea if you've got a ton of research, then you'll be in a good situation, saving yourself upwards of around 100 days worth of speedups since every percent really makes a big difference, especially when you're talking the thousands of days of speedups. The Loha gives you the best speedups per AP in the game. So if you want to do a ton of speedup grinding for a Zenith, get yourself, get a farm account in the home kingdom, just sit in the middle of nowhere and just rally Lohars all day. Just sit there and just rally Lohars. If you can get through a ton of Lohars, even maybe get some of your kingdom members on board to use their Lohars since I can assure you a lot of people in your kingdom have upwards of a thousand of these stacked in the inventory, then you're going to be able to get yourself probably another two or three hundred days worth of speedups before a Zenith begins. And it's a great way to grind those speedups really quickly because every speedup counts when you want to push a Zenith and these are the best way to do speedups. I think it is actually worth using your AP bottles if you plan to push a Zenith. Now, if you are in a kingdom with Imperiums in your continent or you just don't have the speedups to push a Zenith, I can assure you you don't really need it to trade good on the field. My trades are fine. I don't own a Zenith skin. I only use an Epic skin for my troops. So you don't need a Zenith skin if we're being real here. Most players don't need a Zenith skin. This is obviously a nice buff and obviously it will make your trades better. 10% extra stats over all players is going to give you a decent advantage. But it's not going to be complete game changing. It's not going to make your account so much better that I'd go, wow, your account is now one of the top accounts in the game. It's going to make you stronger, yes, but it's never going to be the best thing in the game. If you can't get a Zenith or you don't think you can win this Zenith, you're better off saving your speedups and either going for a Zenith at a later date or just using them on something else, like maybe just unlocking the T5 for a KVK, training for your KVK, pre-KVK training, stuff like that may be a better use of your speedups and more value to you than unlocking a city skin, which yes, it's going to make you stronger, but it's not going to be that much stronger. Now, if you do want to know about something that gives a lot of people massive advantages, then you have to check out my armament video yesterday. I get really upset discussing everything to do with armaments because I think they're just the worst system in the whole entire game. The video will be linked on the end screen, and I just want to say I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.